If you live in Arizona, you may have heard other gardeners talking about monsoon gardening. What is monsoon gardening? Does that mean as soon as those nightly dust and thunderstorms begin that you run out to the garden and start planting? Not exactly, but those storms are a signal that it may be time to plant a second round of heat loving crops. Monsoon planting has existed for centuries and in today's video we're going to talk a little bit about what that means and let you know when and what to plant during monsoon season. But if we haven't met before, my name is Angela from Growing in the Garden and I love to share garden inspiration and helpful tips so you can be successful in your own garden. First things first, what is a monsoon? Monsoon season means that our winds shift and during the summer months, we have winds that come in from the south through the summer and bring moisture into Arizona. That added moisture is what creates our summer thunderstorms. So the low desert of Arizona where I live is on the very northern border of the North American monsoon system. Anytime between June and September, depending on the year, added wind, rain, dust, lightning, thunderstorms, and even hail are possible in Arizona. The moisture we receive during the summer monsoon season can account for up to half of our annual precipitation. Each year is different and there's no guarantee, unfortunately, for extra moisture. We know what monsoons are now, so let's talk about monsoon gardening. For centuries, the residents of Arizona and the northwest areas of Mexico have been growing with the monsoons. It has long been considered a second planting window for heat-loving crops that will grow well during the warm months of fall. As monsoons begin, there is a literal change in the air. And although monsoon seasons vary widely from year to year, here is a little bit of what you can expect. Higher humidity, wind and possible microbursts, dust storms, and rain. The added moisture brings out extra pests too. That buzzing you hear is the cicadas that often emerge during a monsoon season. Other pests that make their appearance are palaverde beetles, leaf-footed bugs, and the cicada killer wasps. Although we don't know exactly how intense a particular monsoon season will be, it's really important to prepare your garden. There are a couple of things to keep in mind. The first is to prepare your garden for the added wind. As you drive around after a storm, you often see damaged trees everywhere. Taking good care of your trees is the best thing you can do. Trees that have a nice deep watering system been from being watered correctly will better withstand those high winds. If you have trees in your landscape that are already weakened from pest or disease issues, take them out before the monsoon season comes and that way you have control over where they fall. In your garden, prevent wind damage to plants by staking tall plants such as corn and sunflowers and zinnias. Tie plants to supports loosely to allow for air movement but prevent the crop from breaking off or falling. I often use bamboo stakes and clips to clip many of my tall vegetables. I plant sunflowers next to existing tall supports in the garden and tie them to that support just to give them a little bit of added support during those intense winds. So be aware when you're adding shade structures or other vertical supports to your garden that they are going to need to be sturdy enough to withstand those monsoon winds. I added a large shade structure to my garden this year and those steel supports go into the ground two feet deep and they're cemented in. The shade cloth blows and billows during the monsoon winds, but for now it has held up. There is good air movement through the shade structure and I think that has helped. Now hopefully along with that extra wind, there will be some extra rain, some extra moisture, and often that rain comes quickly and unexpectedly. So it is important to have some kind of rain harvesting system in place. There are many different ways you can do this. And if you have ideas for rain harvesting systems that have worked, I would love to hear your ideas and comments because that's something that I would love to improve upon in my garden. What can you plant during monsoon season? From transplants, add tomatoes, tomatillos, peppers, and eggplants to your garden. From seed, add amaranth, 
corn, cucumber, basil, okra, squash, winter squash, and all the beans, tepary, pinto, lima, pole beans, and bush beans. If you wanna start a couple of those things like amaranth or even squash indoors, that's okay. Just get them planted out quickly before their second set of true leaves come. They will transplant better if you transplant them very young into your garden. When you're looking at the varieties and trying to choose which types of plants to add to your garden, this is a short season. Right? We don't have one long growing season here in the low desert. We have several short growing seasons. So you're always going to do better by choosing a shorter days to harvest variety in these different vegetables. Look at the days to harvest on the back of the seed packet and choose the shorter days to harvest on those varieties. Although there may be added humidity and nightly dust storms, it's really hard to know exactly when to plant because a lot of times those days are still really hot and that can be hard on plants. So when you're trying to determine the best time to begin planting your monsoon garden, there are a few things I like to look for. The first thing is look at the weather. If we are in the midst of 110 plus heat wave, wait. Nothing likes it that hot. As you look ahead to the seven to 10 day forecast and you see a little bit of a cooling pattern, not the intense heat of 110, but maybe the lower hundreds or even into the 90s for an extended amount of time, that would be a better time to plant. If you have several days with cloud cover and extra humidity and possible rainstorms, that's an excellent time to plant. That added cloud cover helps those plants transition better into your garden. As you're bringing plants from inside, if you started them indoors, out to your garden, you need to take the necessary time to harden off your transplants. This can take between seven to 10 days to do it properly. Hardening off literally means that you're hardening the cell walls of those plants so they are better able to withstand the heat and survive moisture loss that will happen once they're placed outside. Once your seedlings are hardened off, plant them in the evening. That allows them to settle in during the relatively cooler temperatures of evening before the sun comes the next day. Pay close attention to your transplants in the first couple of weeks after planting especially. You may need to provide extra moisture and added shade to help them transition into your garden. When you're planting seeds, plant those seeds a little bit deeper. If you go down a little bit more, that soil is going to be a little bit cooler and not dry out quite as quickly. Mulch lightly over the top of where you plant to keep that soil from drying out. You may need to water newly planted seeds a couple of times a day to help them to germinate. So what about watering during the monsoon? Watering can be tricky because although it is still hot, there is added moisture in the air with the extra humidity and the possibility of rainstorms. So you really have to be hands-on during monsoon to determine how much water your plants need. Using a soil probe can help with this. It's not always easy to tell how moist the soil is. Before watering, you really want to pull back that mulch a little bit and check on the moisture level of that garden. Don't just automatically assume that it needs watered. Too much water can be just as harmful to your plants as not enough. Roots need air as well as water to survive. And when we overwater, we're removing that oxygen from the soil that is so vital to healthy roots for plants. Having a rain gauge in your garden takes the guesswork out of how much moisture was received during a particular storm. I know sometimes I will go out and think, man, we got a lot of rain. It just seemed to come down or it was raining a little bit for a while and you go out and there's barely a trace. And barely a trace of rain is not enough to water your plants deeply. If your yard receives at least two tenths of an inch of rain, then go ahead and skip a garden watering. If your yard receives half an inch of rain, then you can also skip a landscape watering for your trees and shrubs. 
hopefully during the course of a monsoon season your yard will get at least one deep soaking rain of a couple of inches and if that doesn't happen it's important for you to provide that because the added salt in the water at this time of year tends to settle on the roots of the plants and so what you want to do is water twice as deep at least once during this season to push those salts down through the soil and away from the roots of your plants. Watering trees correctly now during the monsoon and summer season will help prevent problems in your fruit trees later. Problems with splitting fruit are often associated with inconsistent watering during the summer months. What about providing shade during monsoon season? If you already have shade in place, yes, keep that shade up. Just be aware that it needs to be sturdy like we talked about with the wind. Keep that up until temperatures are consistently below 100 degrees. Once temperatures have dipped below 100, then you want to give your plants access to all of that sunlight because the days are getting shorter and the sun's angle is lower and they definitely want to have as much sunlight as possible. Having a healthy garden during monsoon season comes down to a lot of those same practices that we use the other times of year to ensure a healthy garden. Things like focusing on your soil health, crop rotation, companion planting, planting at the right time, watering correctly, choosing disease resistant varieties of plants, spacing your plants properly to give them adequate room and airflow, keeping your garden clean, not letting weeds get out of control, and practicing polyculture principles to attract beneficial insects to your garden. Okay, what about all the extra pests that we tend to see during monsoon season? Well, that is where daily vigilance in your garden, daily walks through your garden, checking your leaves, checking the undersides of leaves, kind of keep an eye on what is going on in your garden is going to be so crucial during this time of year. With the added moisture and the heat, everything is magnified. Things are growing really fast. Pests can multiply quickly. So spending time in your garden each day, even though it's hot, is crucial during monsoon season. As you walk through your garden, trim off damaged leaves, look on the undersides of leaves for pests, for eggs. It's best to catch problems when they're small and before they get out of hand. But if you have a problem that multiplies and it plant is becoming completely overtaken, go ahead and remove that plant and get that out of your garden so it doesn't spread to other areas. There are a few pests that seem to be a little more prolific during monsoon season. So I'm going to cover a few of those pests and give you some ideas for ways to help manage those pests in your garden. First, leaf-footed bugs. If you have pomegranate trees, you've often seen leaf-footed bugs on your pomegranates. So what should you do? Keeping an eye on your plants and hand picking as many as you can is the best defense against leaf footed bugs. White flies can often get out of control. One thing that you can do to help is using the sticky traps. And sticky traps, you have to be really careful when you use them and not use them for an extended amount of time. But if you have an extensive white fly population, keep putting up sticky traps and as they fill, replace them for a couple of days until you get that white fly population under control and then take those sticky traps out of your garden. Spider mites tend to thrive in hot, dusty, dry conditions. So if we've had a dust storm, not followed by rain, go ahead and wash down or spray down those plants to help prevent an infestation of spider mites. Squash bugs definitely can make their appearance. They can be very hard to treat. It's best to stay on top of them and find them early. Use row covers, hand pick and destroy eggs, nymphs and adults, use crop rotation, vertical gardening helps, boards under plants as traps, plant resistant cultivars like butternut and early summer crookneck. With thrips, you wanna keep your plants free of dust, spray down those plants with water occasionally, you can also use rolled cardboard traps, blue sticky traps, following the same guidelines that you were following with the yellow sticky trap. What about ants? I get a lot of questions about ants and generally ants are beneficial and not problematic. If they are in large numbers and causing problems for your garden, you can use ant bait traps and those can be very effective against ants. 
So what else can you do this time of year? As you look around your garden, you may have existing tomato, pepper, and eggplants that have made it through the summer but are looking a little worse for the wear. It's a good time to cut some of those crops back to kind of reinvigorate those plants. So to do that, you're going to look for the new growth on your tomatoes and peppers and eggplants and then cut the branches back just above where you see new growth. And then you should see a growth explosion happen during this season. And hopefully that means a nice big fall crop of those vegetables. If you're not going to be planting for another six to eight weeks and you have empty beds, add a cover crop to take advantage of the added moisture and humidity. So when you plant a cover crop, you're going to allow it to grow and then turn it into the soil or chop it and just leave it on top of the soil before it begins to flower. Now is a great time to make a plan for your fall garden and begin starting seeds indoors for many of our fall and cool season crops. For additional lists of tasks to do in your garden each month of the year, check out my June, July, August, and September blog posts and videos. They have comprehensive lists about what you can do each month of the year to help your garden survive and thrive. Now that you know a little bit more about monsoon gardening, hopefully you'll take advantage of this second planting window for some warm season crops. Best of luck with your garden and thank you so much for watching.